giving a brief overview about how the how we need a new sensor material why we need a new sensor material to develop sensors and from that i'll move on to um hydrogels and uh, why we have chosen hydrogels as, as our sensor material sensing materials uh, and i'll be uh, starting with uh, giving a few uh, few advantages uh, but, uh, and then we'll be proceeding to open face FET structure uh, uh, be uh, telling about how versatile the structure is and how we have developed our sensor uh, hydrogel, I mean polymer sensor on top of the FET structure and then I'll be giving the, uh, a brief overview of the device physics about how this type of FET works I mean not in conventional term but in a, it's, it's a new kind of a device physics and then I'll proceed with the results and discussion that I've got. So we need, uh, I mean, as we know that there are a great demand of, uh, of on finding a new uh, and developing a new sensor material, which can detect different species, uh, it might be gas or liquid with high sensitivity. So with the advent of like uh, internet of things, uh, there's uh, more need of, uh, of very low cost low power requirement of sensors with uh, excellent performances and however the things one should keep in mind while working on this, with this type of sensor that this sensitivity and uh, cross sensitivity like a methane sensor or a, a carbon monoxide sensor is cross sensitive with uh, other re reducing gases um, again uh, against uh, selectivity and cross -select sensitivity or cross selectivity uh, methane, uh, same methane sensor can be cross selective with temperature or humidity. So we have to keep, the, keep this in mind and also the reliability and uh, power consumption should be kept in mind as well. Uh, here I, I would like to show you uh, that this, this uh, hydrogel with DNA uh, uh, implanted uh, as a functional material so that we can detect a DNA as well. I mean, uh, that's the versatility and how smart the hydrogel is. So, <clears throat> why we are using the hydrogel? So, here you can see that the hydrogel is an open structure. It has got a meshes and uh, which will allow easy diffusion of the species that we want to detect. And and if we are adding and if we can add uh, uh, a different nanoparticle or functional group to the hydrogel matrix, then that which which will help to specifically detect that kind of species that we want to sense, then the selectivity will be quite higher. That's the uh, that's why we called it a smart hydrogel, and uh, also uh, it's an excellent medium medium to structurally hold the nanoparticles. I mean, before that, it's it's very hard to do experiments with the nanoparticles because there's no medium where you can put those things to hold those structurally and uh, also hydrogel is a transparent we can uh, use it I mean to watch it in uh, reading glasses or in windows uh, to detect uh, to sense the more uh, or to monitor different gases in the for safety purposes and all so here I'm showing the uh, the other properties of hydrogel uh, where we see that the hydrogel expands uh, as we uh, in, uh, decrease the ionicity of the medium that which is uh, which it is present in. So here the uh, hydrogel was already uh, kept in PBS for a long time, and once we have kept it in uh, um, in a DI water, it starts to swell. So the uh, the gap the, the, that means the cavity is increasing, the I mean, cavity size is increasing, which will allow much more amount of uh, species that we want to detect through the hydrogel network and uh, that that means we will get higher uh, responsibility and so so and now we move on to our open face FET structure so so this is our open FET structure which is uh, built on a glass substrate uh, the versatility of means is so versatile that we can detect I mean we can put uh, channel material of anything, even an insect or bug, you can say. So this is how it's made. So this is your 
gates gate little these are recess gate it's in the it's in the bottom and then we are using hafnium oxide as our oxide layer of uh, this 10 nanometer of thickness and then these are uh, drain and source which are uh, 100 nanometer uh, and, and it's made of platinum so so here are the different uh, channel material types of channel material that we have used with this AKG structure so this is an uh, vanadium oxide nanoparticle that we have used and uh, these are liquid these are the nanowires and this is uh, plasma of FET this means that we can use even a gaseous material for our uh, as a channel material in this FET structure so, so what we have done here uh, see, in order to deposit this uh, hydrogel uh, nanoparticle we have first prepared the uh, gold doped nanoparticle gold doped uh, gold nanoparticle doped hydrogel into uh, and and then placed on drop casted on top of this FET structure so this is how we have done it and this is our uh, images image of the same device so what you see this, these are just some uh, dark patches these are uh, like uh, as we like uh, as we bring our uh, sensor to the open environment, the top layer dries up and creates some patches. So this is what we are seeing here. So this is our uh, this is our uh, experimental setup. So what we have used, this is our devices, and this is the uh, semiconductor parameter analyzer. We have used ethyl alcohol as uh, uh, this is the air bubble, uh, gas bubbler system. So we are using compressed uh, nitrogen gas uh, to bubble the ethyl alcohol for the uh, for taking the gas. And this is the ethyl alcohol solution that we are using, uh, uh, dropping from the top in order to detect the ethyl alcohol liquid as well. So this is a kind of detects both the gas and liquids of ethyl alcohol. So what you see that you know, from as we uh, drop the uh, leak solution or blow ethyl alcohol gas uh, initially the top layer will be will have higher concentration of ethyl alcohol as we go down to, uh, towards the channel material so it will take some time but it works so this is the device of now I explain the device operation of the of this thing so what we for this what we have assumed that uh, that uh, the device that we have is a multi-particle uh, uh, gold nanoparticle uh, system but what we for our easy uh, assumption we have modeled the same thing as a sum of single particle for uh, assuming that the gold nanoparticles are uniformly distributed so so and for that we have uh, and uh, what we know that gold nanoparticles are positively charged uh, in order to be so that they don't coagulate together and uh, when we apply a uh, negative gate field voltage this particle will go down and uh, it will create a channel uh, continuous channel from drain to source now as we apply the drain to source voltage then it will, it will form a continuous short contact so that we can get the current flow between drain and source so this is how it works so when i will apply when i am applying the gate voltage uh, negative gate voltage the particle is moving down and then the then initially the drain uh, the after applying the VDS uh, the uh, current flows the current conduction technique is a uh, quantum tunneling and after that then it becomes a contact conduction when the gate voltage is sufficiently low so this is how it works <coughs> and uh, this nanoparticle uh, has been modeled this nanoparticle has been modeled as a, a, a distributed spring connecting the gold nanoparticles so the final conduction uh, means depends will depend on the left modulus of the, of the springs between those two springs so higher uh, electric modulus means that we need more to get filled uh, to bring down the nanoparticles towards the channel here are the ID VDS of the uh, of di with different uh, ethyl alcohol concentration. So as we move on to the higher uh, concentration of ethyl alcohol, 
the ethyl alcohol pulls up the water from the channel and that's why we are getting a very low current so this is how we have characterized this now now we have compared this with the, uh, with the gold nanoparticle one and without the gold nanoparticle one so of course the uh, we are getting higher conductivity with the gold nanoparticle now as we are, when you are using hydrogel in dipped in water it has got high resistivity so what we see here that the current uh, current conduction is quite low than the pbs one but the responsivity is will be is quite higher as you can see is quite the sensitivity of the ethyl alcohol gas is quite higher than the uh, pbs one as you can see over here the pbs one of course has got higher uh, current and the responsivity is quite high and uh, and as for if the sensors there we should check the temperature in sense um, uh, the consistent cross sensitivity with the uh, temperature so you can see here is the that it has quite low um, temperature sensitivity so that way it won't interfere with the gas sensing thing so as a part of the future work I would say that uh, yeah, we need to check the cross sensitivity with the other different types of gases and also we can try with different functional nanoparticles in order to to um, sense different gases. Uh, we have also tried with uh, wearables as well. So it's a new kind of work. Uh, what we have done is we have deposited uh, um, hydrogel uh, with, uh, with the hydrogel on a, on a watch. Uh, the bottom electrode is an IPO and the top electrode is the graphene PET. This is a single layer graphene. So we are getting an open circuit voltage. You can directly measure the open circuit voltage and um, so we don't need any other system to like sense the uh, gas or any particular thing and uh, like this is the we have the deposited hydrogen on a, in a uh, reading glass so the sensor output is uh, is like we are breathing uh, our, our co2 on top of this thing and uh, we are getting this response these spikes as we are breathing these are the three instances we are breathing co2 on top of this thing so all these things we can detect in the simple multiplicator so this is the versatility of hydrogel because uh, it allows easy um uh, easy absorption of gases through the material